Welcome to the Deadly Dixon's channel. Today I'm going to be continuing my alien investigation in the sciences. This is the Dark Forest Theory. This goes with my other two podcasts I recently did. One was the Drake Equation and the other was the Fermi Paradox. This came about from a discussion with a friend we got into a really cool uh, conversation, which has continued. And it goes back to some of my other science podcasts you can check out, like the Errors of the Universe. And we were talking about some of the disclosures uh, that were going on in the government. What could UFOs be? And it got me thinking, you know what, I'm going to do a bunch of podcasts on this uh, area in a general sense of what some scientists out there think. Now... You can look at the Drake equation, the Fermi paradox, and you can check those out. They're in my sciences playlist. Maybe I'll make a playlist specifically for this. Normally, I will read the whole article word for word. Sometimes I'll interject something here and there. I'll put the link to the article in the description. I usually always remember to do that. If I forget, leave a comment. This is titled Dark Forest Theory. A terrifying explanation of why we haven't heard from aliens yet. The Fermi Paradox asks us where are all the aliens are if the cosmos should be filled with them. The dark, <laughs> the dark Forest Theory says we should pray we never find them. This is by Scotty Hendricks. It's from the Big Think website. Uh, it's a really cool image. <laughs> There's a button to listen to the article, so you could probably listen to someone do it way more professionally than me. But I'll continue. The Milky Way galaxy has 200 billion stars and perhaps 100 billion planets. If even a small fraction of those planets harbored life, and even if only a pathetic scattering of those planets had life forms which became intelligent, our galaxy, galaxy should, would be teeming with alien civilizations some of whom would either be looking for us or discoverable for at least a little while. The number of alien civilizations in the galaxy should have... Can, uh, uh oh, I fucked up. The number of alien civilizations the galaxy should have can be determined by an equation, the Drake equation. There's a link, it's highlighted. These hit you off into other links. You'll get more information. That turns the above factors into variables. When you plug them into the formula, you find that there should be at least 20 civilizations in our cosmic neighborhood. This makes the fact that we have yet to find any other life in the cosmos almost shocking when you think about it. This is part of our discussion, too, that we were having. I'm going to continue. The seeming discord between how many advanced civilizations ought to be in space and the lack of evidence for any is known as the Fermi Paradox. Again, there's another highlighted link, and I have done a podcast on it. It has led to dozens of hypotheses and potential solutions over the last few decades. Many of the solutions aim at one of the variables in the Drake Equation and try to make the supposed number of civilizations lower so it is more reasonable for us to not have met anybody yet. Some propose that life starting at all is rare. Others suggest that the development of intelligence is the bottleneck. Others still posit that most civilizations would live for a short time before blowing themselves up, or, conversely, never even manage to invent the radio. Hmm, that's interesting. I guess you can see the odds of these Civilizations being out there and them suffering a meteor strike and stuff. Uh, we'll see if it gets into that. And one solution, however, is a bit darker than the others. The Dark Forest solution explains why we haven't heard from aliens by positing that they are purposely keeping quiet. The reasoning is laid out best in the science fiction novel The Dark Forest by Liu Sixin. The plot of the book the second in the series concerns questions of how to best interact with potentially hostile alien life. In the novel, the argument is laid out like this. All life desires to stay alive. 
There is no way to know if other life forms can or will destroy you given a chance. Lacking assurances, the safest option for any species is to annihilate other life forms before they have a chance to do the same. Since all other life forms in the novel are risk averse and willing to do anything to save them, save themselves, contact of any kind is dangerous. That is almost assuredly would lead to contracted race wiping out whoever was foolish enough to give away their location. This leads to all civilizations attempting to hide in the radio silence. That's an interesting way to do it, but okay, I, I get it. Uh, there's a reasoning behind the paranoia as explained in the paragraph. There's a quote from the book, I believe. The universe is a dark forest. Every civilization is an armed hunter stalking through the trees like a ghost, gently pushing aside branches that block the path and trying to tread without sound. Even breathing is done with care. The hunter has to be careful because everywhere in the forest are stealthy hunters like him. If he finds another life, another hunter, angel, or a demon, a delicate infant to tottering old man, a fairy or demigod, there is only one thing he can do. Open fire and eliminate them. <laughs> it's a bit like the prisoner's dilemma, really, and the concept is based on applied game theory. And by the way, when it gives you these descriptions like I've described, there are highlighted words that lead to links that'll explain the prisoner's dilemma and game theory. I'll continue. Is there a non-literary approach to this solution, or is it just an idea that is good for a story? It was also put forth by scientist David Brin as a potential solution to the lack of radio evidence for alien life. While the variant he describes relies on robotic probes carrying out the task of killing off civilizations other than the one that created it, the core concept remains the same. In this excerpt, he explains why this solution an attractive one for scientific purposes and terrifying for existential reasons. Existential reasons. And there's a quote. It is consistent with all the facts and philosophical principles described in the first part of this article. There is no need to struggle to suppress the elements of the Drake equation in order to explain the great silence. Nor need we suggest that no ETIS anywhere would bear the course of interstellar travel. It need only happen once for the result of this scenario to become the equilibrium condition in the galaxy. We would, we would not have detected extraterrestrial radio traffic, nor would any ETIS have ever settled on Earth, because all were killed shortly after discovering radio. Hmm. That's interesting to think about. But it does veer into that feeling where you're using game theory and stuff and you're aligning your facts and building up a narrative. But hey, that's what these hypotheses and theories are. Because I don't know if you really call these things theories in the scientific sense, but I'm sure there are people who could show me equations in math. I'll continue. He then reminds us that broadcasts of I Love Lucy are racing across the cosmos, ready to reveal our location and sense of humor to anybody who could pick them up. That's funny. <laughs> How plausible is this theory? This theory has the advantage of only affecting one of the variables in the Drake equation and affecting the one that is the most open to speculation. It also doesn't require us to make broad assumptions about how all alien civilizations behave. A single advanced race that acts this way would be enough to cause the observed situation. This would also explain why we haven't found any mundane alien radio signals, despite a century of being able to pick them up, just as we accidentally send our radio signals meant for us out into space, another civilization would be likely to as well. One possible reason for this is that other civilizations are so fearful of being detected that they purposely avoid sending out any radio evidence of their existence. It does, however, assume that other species have a similar risk aversion level and reasoning process as we do, or, there, or that there really is one civilization out there killing off anybody they think can harm them. This is a big assumption. This is one of these things that could be crazy, just sometimes it blows my mind. 
you know, reading these things. Why is this theory dark? We've been screaming our existence to the cosmos for almost 100 years now. Any aliens within a 100 light year radius of us would be receiving a barrage of radio signals from our direction. If we had reason to avoid letting aliens know about us, as Stephen Hawking thought we did, we might have a problem. Why haven't we heard from aliens yet? If this solution is correct, they are purposely hiding in the darkness of space, fear of death. Should we stop broadcasting our existence to the universe too then? Or would alien life be a little nicer than we've been in our history? That ends the technical article and talking to my friend about some of these things. You could really paint a really good logical, uh, you know, I guess, equation and uh, argument, a theory. And I could see where you could be convinced of some things. Um, You see it makes sense in some places. And I think one of the key things is we're assuming they're like us, right? And that's like, we were talking about like, you know, eyes, mouth, uh, two legs, two arms. Like, we don't really know. And some movies depict this in a really cool way. You know, like the way we Oh, we see aliens in a certain fashion that if there really is a more bizarre spectrum and what would their levels of intelligence be? Does it have to do with dexterity? Uh, could you have a most advanced brain and you're in an amoeba-like body uh, so you can't create cities or something? Or it just sometimes boggles my mind, like trying to go over some of the things. A lot of the things came from disclosures that were coming out and about what was the potential, more probable cause, and like, you know, fledging reporters, we were going over things and connecting with each other every now and then. And I'm starting to think that if there was a civilization, if there was something different from us out there, it sent probes that were unmanned, if that makes any sense. And some of this describes it as a, you know, robotic probes, but not to really destroy all the civilizations, just to see what is out there, like we're doing with probes. And maybe we found a probe, archaeological dig, whatever, it's all been disinformation, there's a secret cabal of government that knows, and we've been using that technology. But I do not believe in a visiting alien civilization coming to us, I do have the fancy for wanting to believe that it's us from the future, that type of theory. There's a bunch of, um, you know, things you can go into that uh, try to make sense of things. And that's what we've been trying to do. It's been hilarious, but um, don't bring up quantum mechanics. In any case, we have so much distance between us. We have so many ideas of what would be needed to create these warp drives and. just a a plethora of just ideas on how we could traverse this huge expanse of space. Uh, One of the conversations we had was, I think I might have mentioned this before in other podcasts, but even at light speed, it takes us four years to get out of our solar system, I think, or a galaxy or something. That just, this is mind boggling. So even if we can create ships like, I, I also talk about a show called The Expanse. It's a really good show. The books are great up to a point. They never lose total quality, but they're a recommendation. The show is pretty good. And it's like a more realistic approach to what we would be like in the future. And then they add a fantastical element into it. However, you're looking at an advanced fusion drive that gives us more thrust and boost. So, But we still have to go through the G-force of these rockets, so they have to have special gel seats, they get injected with drugs. And, like, this would be, like, the practical stage of our um, development. If we make rockets that take six months to get to Mars, and we relatively don't have to worry about the G-force, right? maybe we could get that factor up, get there in three months, and there's no danger. But once you try to start getting the distance between... (laughs) 
you know, planets and uh, solar systems, it becomes so vast. It blows my mind. I try to look at some of these maps and uh, the theories on how the universe is flat with bumps in it and space-time curvatures and craziness. The vast distance is amazing, mind-boggling, and it's awe-inspiring. Uh, I read an article about um, Voyager 2, which picked up something on the inner of the heliopause, this like, distance in space between our sun's magnetic field and the rest of the galaxy, the universe. And it just, just blows my mind. But on the, talking about the dark forest theory, the Fermi paradox, the Drake equation, I'm probably going to do one on the Great Filter, which is another um, hypothesis or theory. But in this one, it seems a more... Uh, view of humans like if we're just going to use our game theory like how we would react it could make sense that we would hide ourselves if we found another civilization wiped them out i mean it's not too unplausible in looking at our history as a people but i'd have to have a better outlook a little more hope you know maybe they're not little green men or maybe like that movie what is it arrival where they're like um i don't know like fucking weird shape they have probably a fucking name I watched the uh, great uh, documentary by my octopus teacher. Great recommendation. Thank you. It was uh, just amazing to see like a creature on our planet, like an octopus, and what it can do. So who knows? But I just think that it keep, my instincts keep telling me, and the more informed opinions I get, that there isn't a robust query of, of our planet from another or practically more than one alien civilization. I think a lot of these things are man-made, they're misunderstood. We've got human psychology, human brains, things being developed all the time. If it was back in the past, it would be new planes. And we got blackbirds, we got drones that came out of nowhere. And what you know, so you combine that and I don't think it's alien. So the big question we we were starting to get to is if it is anything, there are UFOs. They're unidentified objects. Unidentified aerial phenomenon now, which I think is hilarious. That means it has to be our stuff. And what, what does that mean for a certain cabal with insane breakthroughs in technology? That's what these disclosures are masking in a way. So it's a pretty interesting conversation, but I love talking about it. The sciences are really interesting to me. It's uh, as I describe, it's a, it's where I guess my spirituality is. And looking at these theories and these questioning things, it's some of our biggest questions ever. It's are we alone in the universe? What's out there? We're on a spaceship called Earth, traveling through space, and it just you know it just gets you out of this place where you become humbled by bigger things happening in the universe. I saw a podcast and I was going through some of the, uh, I don't know, let's say pros and cons of alien stuff. And you watch some shows here, you watch some, some shows there. I talk about how I would do searches, which is a neutral position so let's say uh, pick a, an event or Nemitz or some alien footage. You type it in neutral, you type it in scam, you type it in truth, fact, that type of thing. And it really gets interesting, but it, it just drives me closer, closer to more of a, the scales tipping in the favor of it's just things we're creating that we're um, – on the verge of different technologies, not every agency knows what's going on. It's better to create more disinformation and leak out things. And I think there's always that case of when these streets were built in our countries and when these laws were put in effect, eventually there were people who listened to people who knew about human evolution, about the brain about how we work as a species, how we process information. And I see just the manipulation that goes on, and it sometimes gets mired and 
you go down rabbit holes and you got to keep a good perspective. But I look at it as we have more of a people problem, that there are things going on with maybe with our government that has a answer for these things, but not other races coming in. I think that really well I'll sum it up then. The dark forest theory, a somewhat darker explanation of why we haven't been visited by aliens. And like I said, this conversation was from a good friend of mine. We've been having a conversation back and forth, uh, having a really good time. And it, uh, it kind of correlates to the time we're in where things are getting disclosed and all of a sudden they're talking about things. But I think nothing will ever come out of it. You'll always have a former CIA head of an agency correlating to new video footage. And I just have this thought that there's so many cameras pointing up, so many telescopes pointing up, so many satellites pointing down, Google Maps, where... We're tracing meteors 23 million light years through space from their origin. We're mapping the debris in our space. It just would be so obvious that there couldn't be any disinformation. It would just be insanely great video, insanely great pictures with decent explanations. Anyway, that's where I stand on this. Like I said, I'll continue this little subgenre of the sciences. I hope you'll join me. The next one I think will be the Great Filter. Hope everybody's doing well. My best to you and yours. Take care.